Get ready because it's time for another round of my collection video series. This time we are continuing with my entire 4K collection. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Ken with Mid-Level Media back again for another collection video. This time I will be showing off all 91 of my 4Ks in my collection in this video. That is right, there is uh, at least 25 more titles in this collection than I had in my Screen Factory Shout Factory collection, which I appreciate everybody that checked that video out that I dropped last week. Um, a lot of people checked it out, a lot of people liked the video, a lot of people commented, seemed to enjoy it. So hopefully uh, you all will enjoy this as well. Another thing that I do wanna note before I get started, is that a couple of these titles will be appearing in other collection videos. There is some crossover uh, there with some of the arrows, some of the screen factories that also got 4Ks that I am going to just go ahead and include them because they are 4Ks. But on the flip side, I do have a lot of 4Ks in my Steelbook collection. And because I'm going to be doing a separate uh, Steelbook video, I'm not including any of those um, in this collection. So I'll just, uh, I'll keep the steelbooks for the steelbook collection and just basically do my slipcover uh, 4Ks. I do have a few that don't have uh, slipcovers, but I was actually surprised that uh, to see just how few that I have without slipcovers. Most of these have the slipcovers. I was either lucky enough to get them when I ordered them later on Amazon or picked them up in stores, or most of these I just bought like day of when they came out. That is how I got um, a lot of these 4Ks in my collection. I paid full price for quite a few of these. Before we get started, I wanna ask that if you have not yet liked this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button. I don't think a lot of people really realize how important it is to smash that like button, so please, I would appreciate it. Also, comment down below um, all throughout the video if you want, just any of these titles that um, that you enjoy, that you have in your collection, uh, what's your top five 4Ks of all time, what's your top three, leave that in the comments below. I would definitely love to open up a conversation um, about physical media, I always love that, so leave it in the comments below. Also, be sure guys, if this is your first time discovering me on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on all bell notifications for future videos. I do all kinds of awesome, incredible content on this channel centered around the world of physical media, movies. Um, I do weekly Blu-ray hunts, a physical media report where I run down everything that is coming down in the week. I now do live streams. I have my first ever guest on a couple of nights ago, 4KD Ray, and uh, we had an awesome time talking about physical media and movies. And uh, yeah, just all kinds of content on this channel. Uh, 4K reviews, Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, whatever. Just uh, we do all kinds of stuff here. And I would definitely appreciate it if you guys hit that subscribe button. So let's go ahead and get into things, guys. And I'm going to kick things off tonight with Kick Ass. And this was actually my first ever 4K uh, with a slipcover. My first 4K that I ever purchased was Wonder Woman. Um, on 4K, but that was a collector set. But this is the first ever 4K slipcover that I ever bought, and it was back in 2017 when this came out. And uh, yeah, I remember watching it and thinking it looked really good, uh, but I was brand new into the 4K format, so I was still trying to figure out like what was the real difference between this and Blu-ray. Um, but yeah, this is an awesome movie that I love from 2010 with some great, great performances. Um, I think that this is the best that Nicolas Cage has been in, in the 21st century, in my opinion. He was awesome in this movie. You got Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, Christopher Mintz, uh, Place, uh, Mick Lovin himself in this movie. Chloe Grace Moretz, who really made a splash um, in this franchise as, uh, as Hit Girl and kind of launched her career there. So yeah, Kick-Ass, super fun movie by Matt Reeves. Um, but yeah, and you're going to see me go into a lot of these movies because I can't stop myself from just talking about them and how I love them. A lot of these movies I love. Uh, so we're going to talk about them a little bit. And I'm going to try not to make this as long as the Screen Factory collection, even though I have more titles. Um, I'm not going to be showing them off in the same way that I was the Screen Factory stuff. So let's go ahead and get into another movie that I love. This is my favorite film of 2019, and that is 1917. In my opinion, this is the best war film ever made. Fantastic film. This one's kind of significant because I remember last year picking this up right at the beginning of uh, the quarantine, the pandemic. I, I went out in stores and bought this because after I think like two weeks of being held up inside and I was like, I've had enough. I'm going out and I'm buying a piece of physical media in stores 
and it was 1917. So uh, it's cool for that reason as well. And it's also just a fantastic movie directed by Sam Mendes. This movie, I am ashamed to say I haven't watched yet, and that is Requiem for a Dream. I picked this up on one of my Blu-ray hunts last year. Still haven't watched it, um, and I really need to watch it. So I need to check this one out. I'm, I'm kind of preparing myself to be in the right mental state of mind uh, because I've heard some really... Uh, not bad things, but just it's a depressing movie and you got to kind of be in the right mental state to watch it. And I'm waiting for that moment, to be honest. So, uh, Requiem for a Dream, I will check out at some point, maybe possibly do a review. This movie right here, guys, I did um, a recommendation for on my five movies you need to watch right now, and that is Hook. Uh, it was $12 on Amazon a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it's still $12. This is definitely worth a purchase, though. Haven't checked out the 4K. The movie is phenomenal, though. It's one of my childhood favorites. Robin Williams, always great. Dustin Hoffman, fantastic as Captain Hook. Uh, what can you say about this movie? Go check out my five movies you need to watch right now for me to go more in depth on this film. But yeah, love the slipcover on that one. This uh, was actually my favorite film of 2020, and that is Bad Boys for Life. It was a little bit controversial when I said that, uh, especially considering I had some heavy hitting dramas like Mank and Pieces of a Woman uh, and Soul up in my top five, and then I, I, I brought out Bad Boys for Life as my number one. Threw a lot of people off, but what can I say? I love the Bad Boys. Uh, I love the first Bad Boys, second one's okay, but I love these two characters. I love these two performers. Uh, it's a lot of childhood nostalgia that goes into it, but in my opinion, they pulled this off far better than I ever expected them to, and it's just a great action movie that I love. So um, let's get into uh, a, a movie that I watched, not for the first time, but the fir probably the first time in like 15 years last month, held up incredibly well, looked fantastic on 4K. That is The Matrix um, on 4K, and I don't have the other two in 4K yet. I don't know if I'll ever buy them. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of them. I don't remember liking them that much. I haven't seen them since the theater, so maybe someday I'll get it because I'm a completionist. As of right now, I just own the first one, and the first one is a science fiction classic for sure. So, um, and I tried to put these in some kind of order, at least by franchise, not necessarily genre. Uh, so we're going to be shifting back and forth between like childhood 80s classics and uh, superhero movies and science fiction and horror um, because I didn't really put this in any particular order. So next one up, guys, is a slipcover that I really uh, think was one of the best that the year came out. The movie was was pretty good, actually, better than I expected. And that is Venom starring Tom Hardy. Um, this is an exclusive slipcover, I believe, for the 4K. I don't think the DVD um, or Blu-ray or any of that had it. But yeah, um, awesome slipcover. And I actually enjoy this movie quite a bit. Haven't seen it since 2018. Um, after I bought the 4K, I, I watched it. And that was the last time I watched it. So um, maybe I need to check that one out again because I do remember enjoying it. Next one up, guys, we have Interstellar, a Christopher Nolan masterpiece. I actually, from memory like this movie better than Inception, but I've only seen them both one time. And uh, yeah, I remember enjoying this one quite a bit more. I think Matthew McConaughey was phenomenal in this movie. A lot of great performances in this film, and I need to check it out in 4K um, at some point. So this is one that the transfer was spectacular, um, and that is Wizard of Oz. And this is just a classic movie. It's in my top 50 of all time. Uh, what else can you say about the Wizard of Oz? It's just a classic. Looks great on 4K, so definitely pick that one up. Love the cover on it as well. Next up, guys, is a 4K cover for a movie that I love from my childhood that I don't enjoy, um, and that is Gremlins. Yeah, this is just not a good cover right here for this movie. Uh, I wish they had a different design, but I mean, it's it's fine, but I don't, I don't really like the yellow that much. I wish I would have got the Steelbook, uh, to be honest. This is one of the few cases I wish I would have got the Steelbook instead, but um, yeah, Gremlins, fantastic movie. It's a classic. Next up, guys, is a slipcover that I do uh, like a lot, and that is Alien. Uh, I love the metallic kind of sheen on it, and yeah, this is one of my top 50 movies of all time. Love Alien for sure. It is my favorite in the Alien franchise. Um, I know that some people that really love Aliens uh, would disagree, but I, I love horror. So it's I love action too, but if you're going horror, action, I'll go horror every time, and Alien is a fantastic horror film, horror sci-fi film. Next up, guys, the movie that's also kind of blurs the line between sci-fi and action and horror as well. It's one of the best Arnold Schwarzenegger movies ever made. This movie is in my top 50 for sure as well, and that is Predator. Um, I don't love the slipcover on this one as much, but um, yeah, this one, if I remember correctly, looks 
awesome in 4K. It's been since 2018 since I watched it, but I remember thinking it looked pretty awesome in 4K. Next one up is a movie that I actually didn't watch in 4K, but I bought because I really like the slipcover, and that's Pet Cemetery. And I really love the movie. This is one of the best um, 80s horror movies, in my opinion. One of the best Stephen King adaptations. I mean, I liked uh, the remake okay. I didn't hate the remake. I liked some of the twists and turns that they did with, uh, with the story in that one. This one's just iconic, and it's uh, it maybe it doesn't have the best performances in it, but uh, yeah, it's just it's a movie I remember really fondly growing up. It, it scared me, it spooked me. Great atmosphere. The Zelda scenes. You got <laughs> the Zelda scenes are pure nightmare fuel, and uh, yeah, Pet Cemetery is great. So let's move on to another 4K that I'm not even sure why I bought the 4K of. Um, other than I just, I really like the movie and that's Green Book. Um, I don't know if it warrants a 4K. I did watch it on 4K. Um, and to be honest, it just, it, it, it just felt like a regular movie, but, um, I probably could have got away with getting the Blu-ray for this one, but I got the 4K. And, uh, one thing with the universal releases, and we'll notice this more and more as I go through them. I hate how they have, it's like slightly bigger with the 4K font. I like it when it's a little bit smaller in the center, uh, like what Warner Brothers does, which we'll get into in a second with the next release. And some of the other ones, Universal seems to be the only one that does this big fat font with their slip covers. And uh, it always makes them kind of lean over to the side a little bit. And I don't really like that with the Universal slip covers. Um, so yeah, that's a theme that might come up again in the video. Next up, let's get into a Warner Brothers slipcover. I love the style of the Warner Brothers slipcovers. This is a movie that came out last year on 4K. Looks great on 4K. I watched it for, might as well have been the first time because I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. I barely remembered it, but Full Metal Jacket. Awesome Stanley Kubrick film. This is my second favorite uh, Stanley Kubrick film, only behind another film that we'll get into later. I have the 4K of, um, but yeah, phenomenal film. Can't wait for A Clockwork Orange on 4K later this year because that's my third favorite Kubrick film. Let's get into some Spider-Man. Sorry, I did my best uh, J.K. Simmons impression. Uh, we got Spider-Man Far From Home on 4K. This is a 4K exclusive cover as well that I actually really liked a lot. And I really like this movie a lot. I know a lot of people say it's not as good as Homecoming. I think it's better in my opinion. I like it better. It's just because I love uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in this villain role. And some of the things they do in this movie, just uh, with the holograms and the action set piece moments and stuff, are like unlike anything I've seen in any other movie. So yeah, I really love uh, Spider-Man Far From Home quite a bit. But this one, in my opinion, is the best Spider-Man film hands down ever made, and that is uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This was an exclusive cover for the 4K as well. And yeah, what can you say about this movie? This is my favorite movie of 2018. It beat out Avengers Infinity War, uh, which was also in my top three. And uh, in my opinion, it's the best superhero movie ever made. It's the best animated movie ever made. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I absolutely love this movie. Great soundtrack, uh, great voice performances, great animation, great story, a lot of emotion and heart, great action. It's just, it's everything in one. To me, it's a perfect movie. Love Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, next up is a movie that's uh, not quite that high, and it's a movie that a lot of people like to hate on. And uh, I also only seen it in theaters. I didn't watch. I haven't watched it on 4K yet. And that is Captain Marvel. I remember this movie being okay. I didn't hate it. I enjoyed watching it in theaters. I'm not the biggest fan of Brie Larson, but or, or her performance as Captain Marvel. But I liked a lot of uh, just what they did with the story in this one. So I like Captain Marvel. Okay, I'm not gonna like come out and defend it if you don't like it, uh, but I think it's okay. Next up, guys, we have another film from 2018 that I did enjoy quite a bit, and that is uh, Ready Player One, directed by Steven Spielberg, with this cool Target lenticular cover. Yeah, that's pretty awesome right there. Love the cover on that one. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. This is one that I've been thinking about rewatching too. I just had it on my mind lately. And uh, honestly, I need to read the book because I do want to read uh, Ready Player Two at some point. This one to me, guys, is the one that I always go back to when somebody asks me, what is the best looking film on 4K? And it's because this is the first time that I really noticed um, the difference in quality between Blu-ray and 4K when I watched this movie. And that was... Uh, Blade Runner 2049, and this movie is just visually stunning on its own. In 4K, it's just absolutely spectacular. I mean, it just looks freaking phenomenal, just some of the visuals, and yeah, it just looks fantastic. I love this movie. I think it's better than this movie right here, Blade Runner, um, the first Blade Runner. So yeah, I got the final cut. I have not watched this in 4K yet, and I haven't seen this movie in a few years, but I just watched it for the first time before 2049 came out. 
And uh, yeah, it made me not excited for 2049. And then I went and saw 2049 and I loved it. So, uh, but that's no surprise because I think outside of Alien, which I love, um, there's another movie in this uh, set that I like from this director. I'm not the biggest Ridley Scott fan, and I kind of think he's a little bit overrated. And uh, Denis Villeneuve is one of, if not the best, filmmaker working today. So it's no surprise that he made um, a blood, a better Blade Runner movie uh, than Ridley Scott. So <laughs> that, that might be a hot take, but it's how I feel. So we'll go ahead and bring out the next Ridley Scott movie, and that is Gladiator. Gladiator is a movie that I haven't seen since probably 2001. It's been forever. Remember enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, Russell Crowe is a great performance. Joaquin Phoenix, great performance. Um, need to watch it again, though, to fully form my opinion on this one. So, and uh, yeah, hopefully soon in 4K. Uh, next up, guys, is another movie I haven't seen, and that is uh, Scarface with Al Pacino on 4K. I bought this one because it was on sale for like 10 bucks online. Great deal. And uh, yeah, I need to watch this one for sure at some point. Brian De Palma film. Um, next is a movie that I have watched, and this one also just like Blade Runner 2049. Um, just lends itself so well to the 4K format because of the incredible visuals and colors and just everything about this film. Classic horror film from 1977, Suspiria, Italian, Giallo, and I just got into kind of the Argento a few years ago, and it was with this movie. That was the first one I watched since then. I've watched like Tenebrae um, and Opera, Phenomenon, and I, I, I enjoy most of his films to a certain degree. Tenebrae and this one, are still his two best in my opinion and this movie just you can't beat this one visually as far as like visual horror movies like this is one of the best greatest of all time so right there Suspiria guys this is a 4k that came out last year um right in the middle of the Tom Cruise one I'll go ahead and show them both together because I just watched them both last year last year and that is Top Gun and War of the World and if I'm not mistaken I have reviews for both of these films on my channel that you can go back and check out my full thoughts on the film, but love them both. This one's a classic Tom Cruise movie, and uh, this one is a great alien invasion disaster flick, also directed by Steven Spielberg. So go back and check out my thoughts on those. The Invisible Man, a movie that came out in 2020, another ugly ass uh, universal uh, 4K slipcover, but yeah, this is a great horror movie. This was in my top 10 of 2020. Love the movie. Um, this was a 4K cover. The transfer was, not as good as I was hoping it would be, um, but the cover on this one is absolute. As soon as I saw it, I was like, damn, I gotta have this. And that is The Mask of Zorro. This is a great 90s kind of action adventure film that I remember enjoying a lot when I was a kid. I wasn't sure how it was going to hold up and it held up so incredibly well. Loved the movie, loved rewatching it this year. Fantastic film, Anthony Hopkins, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Antonio Bear's classic film. Definitely watch it if you haven't yet. This is a classic 80s film um, that a lot of people will point to as one of their favorites of the 80s, and it's one that I watched for the first time a few years ago. Didn't really enjoy it. Didn't really hold up for me, and that is The Goonies. Um, I do love this slipcover, and it was on sale during Black Friday for four bucks, or not four bucks, but for 10 bucks, so I went ahead and picked this one up, even though I don't like the movie as much. I am going to rewatch it at some point, see if I maybe change my opinion. Here we go with another ugly universal cover, and that is the Blues Brothers on 4K. Watch this one for the first time last year as well, and uh, I just thought it was okay. To be honest, I was hoping for a little bit more. I watched Blues Brothers 2000 back in 2000. I remember seeing that movie in the theaters, but for some reason, I never watched this movie until recently, and uh, I thought it was okay. It was fun, but it wasn't as funny as I was hoping it would be. Good music in it, though. And next up, guys, is the only 4K that I have of this franchise, and that is John Wick Chapter 3. Have not upgraded the first two yet, but love this movie. Um, in my opinion, the John Wick franchise, like it just in terms of like size and scope, keeps getting better and better every single time. They can, they can make like 10 of these movies, and I'll be happy. Just keep making them. Keep making them as long as Keanu's healthy. Uh, this next one is Hacksaw Ridge, directed by Mel Gibson. Came out in 2016. One of the best war movies, um, or at least one of the best war sequences um, that I've seen next to 1917, the entire 21st century. Um, I think that the first hour is a little weak, but when you get into the battle scenes in this one, like the way that Mel Gibson directs some of these scenes is like nobody directs war action like Mel Gibson in this movie, like absolutely phenomenal. And uh, I bought this one when it was on sale at Walmart a couple years ago and I still haven't watched it yet. So 
Got to check that one out at 4K at some point. Next up is a classic Kubrick film, another classic Kubrick film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Bought this one when it was on sale on Amazon last year. Watched it. Looks fantastic on 4K. Not the biggest fan of the movie. Um, I appreciate it for what it is and for what it did for the science fiction genre, um, but it doesn't have great characters that you can get engaged with and really just only on a visual level can I truly engage and appreciate the master the mastery of, uh, of the direction with this movie with Stanley Kubrick. So um, not the biggest 2001 fan after seeing it for the first time, but it's okay. Um, next up is a movie that I guess looked fine in 4K. It's not like a classic or anything, but it's Three from Hell uh, from Rob Zombie. And I enjoy this trilogy. I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fine. It was a good close to the trilogy. Um, I need to check out Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses again, though, because it's been a while since I've seen those. Um, but yeah, regardless of how I feel about the Halloween reboot, um, I do enjoy the uh, Rob Zombie Firefly family trilogy. Uh, next up, we have Black Hawk Down from Ridley Scott. Again, another movie I need to check out. Maybe um, I'm wrong about Ridley, and when I watch this and I watch Gladiator again, maybe I turn my opinion on him. Um, but yeah, Black Hawk Down, definitely need to check out. And this is my run of 4Ks. I think the only ones that don't have the slipcover, I got Air Force One right here. Bought this last year. This looks great on 4K too. Classic action film with Harrison Ford from the 90s. Uh, the Karate Kid looks great in 4K too. Watch this one um, for the first time a couple years ago. Really loved it. Uh, Puppet Master. Um, I bought this one because it was on sale at uh, Walmart for like eight bucks and I just bought it on a whim. Still haven't watched it. I don't know why a Puppet Master movie needs to be in 4K, but maybe it looks awesome. Who knows? Um, this one is, I love this movie. I love it more and more every single time I watch it. Movie directed by Quentin Tarantino. The only Tarantino movie, if I'm not mistaken, that is on 4K. Hopefully that changes soon. Uh, but we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, fantastic movie. Fantastic performances by Margot Robbie, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt. I love this movie more and more every single time I watch it. When I saw it in theaters, I was kind of iffy on it. I, I knew I liked it, but I didn't know... Uh, it didn't quite live up to the hype to me, but the more I watch this, I've seen it like four times since I bought it on 4K. I watch this movie a lot, and uh, I love this movie. I just love sinking into this world with these characters uh, for two and a half hours, and I, I love everything about it. I love it more and more every single time I watch it. This slipcover is absolutely amazing, too. I love the slipcover artwork on it. Uh, this one, guys, another big-ass, ugly universal slipcover, and that is Halloween 2018. Uh, this is a movie in uh, um, contrast to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that I actually like a little bit less every time I watch it uh, compared to how I felt about it when I saw it in theaters back in 2018. Um, not to say that I don't like the movie. I do think it's still a very strong Halloween sequel. It does a lot of things right that other Halloween films did not do. Um, but it's, it's a movie that I thought was great. I thought it was my second favorite Halloween movie uh, after the first one. And it's gone down a little bit every single time to where it's probably like my number four favorite Halloween film. Still super excited for Halloween Kills, though, for sure. Um, we got Halloween, guys. The original Halloween right here. I love this slipcover. Just a simple, the original poster. Fantastic. This movie looks great in 4K as well. It was a very good price, too, when this came out. If I remember correctly, it was only 15 bucks for the 4K for that. So great price for that Halloween film. Uh, next up is another horror film that I love. It's in my top three. Halloween's in my top three as well. This is my number two, The Shining. I love this slipcover. This is probably my favorite, hands down, uh, 4K slipcover in my collection. I remember when they first announced this, um, I was like, I, I gotta have that slipcover. It's just one of the best looking slipcovers I've ever seen. I love the silhouette of Jack Torrance with the, with the axe and how it kind of goes into the hotel in the background. Danny riding the tricycle. So many awesome images right there. I still have that Dr. Sleep sticker on there. I don't take my stickers off of my 4 case. Does anybody take the stickers off? Uh, let me know that in the comments below. Are you a weirdo like me and you keep your stickers on? Uh, because, yeah, that's just my preference. I don't like taking them off. Next up, guys, we have Dr. Sleep, which is, in my opinion, I said 1917 uh, was my favorite film of 2019. This is my official favorite film of 2019 because I made my list before I saw 1917. And, yeah, this movie just did everything everything right for a shining sequel far better than i ever anticipated that it would be and yeah this is just such a good sequel to a movie that i love one of my top three favorite horror films of all time and uh yeah love this movie one thing i will say though is that the three hour director cut adds a little bit too much 
um, stuff that I didn't need and it drags quite a bit. I think when you watch the two and a half hour cut, uh, the theatrical release, I think it moves better. I think it has better pacing uh, than the three hour cut. That's just my opinion. I just enjoyed it less uh, when I watched that three hour cut. Not necessary in my opinion. This one up, guys, we have Bright Burn. Um, I enjoyed this movie for what it was. I think it's a great cover too for it. And uh, yeah, this was far gorier than I thought it was going to be. And it's a really fun kind of superhero horror film, um, which you don't get a whole lot within this genre. Yeah, it's an interesting kind of take on an alternate universe Superman is what, kind of what it is. And I hope we get a sequel. Um, this one is one that I watched for the first time and actually reviewed on the channel last year. That is It's a Wonderful Life. And it looks freaking phenomenal on 4K. I love the special features on this, how they go into how they restored this classic film and just how important it is to restore more of these classics, which I couldn't agree more with. And uh, yeah, It's a Wonderful Life. It's a classic. I watched it for the first time last year. Loved it. Uh, moving on to another classic from 1993 and another ugly ass universal cover, and that is Schindler's List. Not the actual artwork, but I just hate this at the top. Uh, this is an iconic shot with a little girl with the, the red pink jacket or whatever color that is. Um, yeah, this is a movie I haven't seen since early 2000s, maybe. Um, I haven't checked out the 4K yet, but definitely need to at some point. Next up is a, is a transfer that a lot of people uh, love to talk shit about, and that is T2, which is the only James Cameron film uh, that we have currently on 4K. Where is my true lies? That's all I got to say. Uh, so moving on to the next one is Terminator Dark Fate. And this one, I, you know, Terminator 2 is in my top 10 movies of all time. I absolutely love that movie. It's the best action movie in my opinion. I know a lot of people were put off with, with what happened at the beginning of this film. I didn't dislike the decision that they made at the beginning of this film as much. And I actually think this is a pretty, it's not a perfect movie, but I think this is definitely the best Terminator movie that we've seen since T2 and I enjoyed the movie if I'm being honest I enjoyed it and I do need to rewatch it at some point as well another ugly <laughs> Universal cover and that is glass and I'm not a big fan of just this artwork in general on the cover of this um, I do like how it's kind of indented and you got the uh, uh, You know the different like shades of the glass or whatever um, but yeah, it's just, it's incredibly dull. It doesn't really take good pictures. Um, a lot of times I, I kind of see the covers through that lens because I take a lot of, um, shots for my Instagram page and this one never takes great, um, shots. So it's a problem that uh, is very specific to me and maybe like 10 other people. Um, but it's a problem that I noticed. So as for the movie, I thought it was great. I love glass and a lot of people were a little down on it. Um, I thought it was the perfect conclusion to this uh, trilogy that uh, M. Night kind of uh, constructed with uh, Unbreakable Split and uh, now Glass. This one, this is a super underrated. People ask me what one of the most underrated movies, underappreciated movies. This is one of the best movies that came out in 2018 and uh, people seem to have forgotten about it a little bit and uh, it didn't get a lot of the recognition that I think it deserved. This is a movie directed by Drew Goddard and that is uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. Fantastic performances by Jeff Bridges, Dakota Johnson, uh, Chris Hemsworth gave, giving maybe his best performance outside of Thor in this movie. I thought he was absolutely uh, fantastic. He got John Hamm in this movie. So many great... Cynthia Erivo, she's fantastic in this movie. Uh, yeah, this is an awesome slipcover as well. Yeah, it's just incredibly um, underappreciated in my opinion. I think more maybe people need to check this out if you haven't because it's one of the best movies from the last few years. Um, this is another 2018 movie uh, with an ugly universal... Uh, banner at the top, and that is First Man. This is a movie that I like a lot, uh, but comparing it to other Damien Chazelle movies, other Ryan Gosling movies, um, I think that uh, it didn't quite meet the level, um, the bar that I was anticipating when this movie came out, but it's also a very different type of story uh, than we're used to seeing from director Chazelle. So I did think it's a very good movie. It is one that admittedly I haven't seen since I bought the 4K. Last time I've seen it, I was in theaters, so do need to check this out again at some point, see how it holds up for me. Um, next up, guys, we got a Alex Garland double feature. We have Ex Machina, which is my number two uh, favorite film of the entire 2010s. This is just one of the best science fiction movies ever made. The best science fiction movie of the 21st century. If you have not seen Ex Machina, um, you got to check it out. 
it's just it's so freaking good. It's the best A24 film in my opinion. Um, Alicia Vikander, Donald Gleason, uh, Oscar Isaac. It's just it's a it will completely blow you away. Um, in ways that you couldn't even imagine if you haven't seen it uh, definitely check that movie out this one also uh, directed by him uh, is Annihilation which I enjoyed quite a bit I didn't think it quite lived up to Ex Machina um, the interesting thing about this one is this is an only at Best Buy um, exclusive 4k I think it's available at more places now or more outlets but when this first came out this the 4k of Annihilation was only available at Best Buy they haven't really done that since um, at least as far as I know. So I do think that's an interesting thing uh, to note. And I kept that sticker on there because I think that's important. Uh, next up is one of my favorite horror movies from the past 10 years. That is Hereditary. Fantastic horror film. Another great A24 movie. What can you say about this movie? I, talk, I feel like I talk about this movie a lot. Um, yeah, just one of the best. Love it. Tony Collette gives maybe the best performance in any horror film of all time. Um, outside of like Ellen Burstyn from The Exorcist or uh, Jack Nicholson from The Shining. She's fantastic in this movie. This movie has a moment that just completely shocks and will blow you out, uh, blow the doors off of you. And yeah, it's a great movie. Hereditary is awesome. Next up is a movie that I am greatly anticipating the sequel for. A movie that uh, the sequel, uh, my heart broke last year when it was delayed because of one of the first ones that was delayed. And that is A Quiet Place. Um, yeah, this was an awesome movie. I just remember the theatrical experience for this so vividly um, because like literally you couldn't munch on a, a, a freaking kernel of popcorn, uh, without feeling like you were being distracting, uh, to other people that are watching this movie. This movie is just so incredibly quiet. It's so incredibly tense. And it's just like, you don't ever want to break, um, that level of tension throughout the film. So one of the most unique, interesting, awesome theatrical experiences that I ever have. And yeah, this is a great movie, great horror monster flick. So getting into my next stack is a movie that I do have the first one of it's a sequel. Um, but it's in my steelbook collection, but this is it chapter two. Love the slipcover on this one, by the way, it's an excellent slipcover. This is one that I have an interesting opinion on. So I don't think it's a better movie than the first it. Um, but I, what I will say is that I love the first it when I saw it in theaters, when I watched it again at home, I liked it a little bit less. Um, something with it just didn't click with me. This one I did not like at all when I saw in the theaters. When I watched it at home, I actually liked it quite a bit. So I changed my opinion on this and the first it, uh, both in different directions. So I just appreciate this one a little bit more on the rewatch just because I, I watched it as like what for what it is. It's like a, a big monster movie. Uh, he, he transforms into so many like big ass monsters. It's almost like watching Godzilla. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's cool. I think it does some interesting things. Um, I don't think that the adult characters have great chemistry in this. It's still not a perfect movie. Um, but yeah, I do like it chapter two quite a bit. And I actually think that Bill Skarsgård's uh, Pennywise is the best in it chapter two. I think he's better than one. This is another 4k exclusive slipcover for a movie that I, I think is pretty damn awesome. Uh, if you haven't seen Overlord, definitely check it out. Um, really good kind of World War II setting. Um, I don't think this movie goes as deep into zombies as a lot of people were anticipating. Um, you really only get a couple towards the end, but it's a great movie in its own right. The opening sequence to this movie is like one of the best like war sequences I've seen in like the past 15 years. I love this movie. This is one of my favorites that, that came out in 2017. This is one of Vince Vaughn's best performances outside of comedy. I think this is a perfect example of why he should be doing more like serious, dramatic, kick-ass roles like this because he's fantastic in the genre. And uh, I'm really hoping I see more of uh, stuff like this from him um, in the future. He was great in Dragged Across Concrete too, which is the other Zoller film. Um, next up, guys, the movie that I've heard is kind of rare now. Uh, or at least getting the slipcover for, and that is Evil Dead 2. I'm so glad I picked it up in Walmart when it came out uh, for only $15. So I think the slipcover for this is going for quite a bit. It's a little pricey um, on eBay right now. But yeah, um, this isn't my favorite Evil Dead movie. In fact, if I were to rank them, this would probably be like number three. Um, I think I like the first Evil Dead a little bit better, and I like the Evil Dead reboot better, but this one's a lot of fun. Looks great in 4K as well. Um, so yeah, Evil Dead 2. Great slipcover, by the way, as well. This is another one that um, I had watched when I was a kid and I hadn't seen it since. When I bought the 4K and rewatched it, it held up so incredibly well. It came like in my top three Carpenter films um, of all time, and that's Christine. And this, uh, what's inter also interesting about this movie is this is the only time um, that Stephen King and John Carpenter cr cr collaborated uh, to create a movie. So Stephen King, of course, this is based on an adaptation. This is the only time 
that uh, Carpenter um, adapted Stephen King's material, material uh, which is interesting in my opinion. Um, yeah, great movie though, by the way. Holds up so well. Uh, this is a cool slipcover that I found at Walmart, and I already own Deadpool, like, uh, I think a couple versions in Blu-ray. Um, but yeah, the 4K for Deadpool, awesome slipcover right here with him riding a unicorn. Uh, kind of has that retro 80s arcade feel to it. This is a Scorsese film that I definitely need to watch at some point. This is like one of the big ones that I need to knock off my list for Scorsese, and that is Casino. I know a lot of old like gangster movies. It's like a genre that, that I really haven't gotten into as much as I need to. I, I recognize it's a blind spot uh, that I'm certainly trying to rectify. I've watched quite a bit of Scorsese films the past few years. This is one I still need to watch soon. Um, one movie that came out last year in 2020 that I thought was quite good. I, I really enjoy this film and that is Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman. I'm not a huge Guy Ritchie fan. I've only seen most of his like more recent work uh, like Sherlock Holmes, like Aladdin. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other movies he did, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoy the gentleman a lot. I know it's like a throwback to like his older films that I need to see like lock, stock and two smoking barrels. Um, but yeah, another ugly universal cover too, by the way. Uh, so moving on to the next one is a movie in my top five of all time. We got a few of those in here because a lot of my top movies of all time came out in 4k last year. Um, Beetlejuice. I love this cover. Transfer was amazing. What can you say about Beetlejuice? It is a classic from the 80s in my childhood that I love. Next up is a movie that I think was definitely the best DC movie in all of 2020, and that is Birds of Prey. Uh, I know some people like to hate on this movie. I liked it quite a bit, and I think this slipcover is freaking awesome as hell. Pan's Labyrinth is a uh, Guillermo del Toro film that I need to check out again soon. I haven't seen it since 2006, 2007 when it came out. Need to check it out in 4K sometime in the near future next up we have jumanji the next level i almost said welcome to the jungle uh this is the only one that i had the slip cover for but i do have the other two jumanjis in my steelbook collection but we'll get into that later um i thought that one was incredibly fun i, I enjoyed the sequel quite a bit almost as much as the uh welcome to the jungle but not as much as robin williams one but definitely the same amount as the other one next up is coco uh one of the i think the only pixar animated film that i have on 4k and it looks fantastic. Love it. I think I watched this one in 4K around the same time I watched Blade Runner 2049. And uh, yeah, one of my first experiences with 4K, this movie looks absolutely stunning in 4K. And it's one of the best, probably in my top 10 Pixar films of all time. The ending, just thinking about it, like makes me want to start crying right now. Uh, so E.T., guys, another film that is in my top five movies of all time. This is my number two film of all time. Love E.T., um, this is another awesome release by Universal, so cool lenticular slipcover. And uh, yeah, I bought this on Amazon last year for I think $10 or $15. It's a really cool edition uh, that has, you know, like the case inside and it's got a booklet. It's got the CD for the soundtrack, which uh, the best John Williams score is E.T. in my opinion too. Um, another great John Williams score, another great John Williams movie. Another movie that is in my top five films of all time is Jaws on 4K. This movie came out last year. Freaking so, such a great movie. My only beef with this release um, is the fact that they didn't add anything new to it. So all the special features in this are on the Blu-ray. Besides that, looks great in 4K. And yeah, I love the packaging on this one for sure. Um, Tenet on 4K. This is a review that on my channel sparked a little bit of controversy. I had a lot of negative comments in that review. And uh, I didn't love the movie. But I thought it was okay. I thought it looked great visually. Um, you know, it introduces a lot of interesting like sci-fi themes and concepts. A lot of like unique, fresh things that I don't think worked entirely and takes a lot for you to understand. And I don't think the movie does enough to really help guide you uh, to that level of understanding. But... I did enjoy the movie, and it is a movie that I think that maybe if I watch it a couple more times, it'll unlock some things, and I might enjoy it a little bit more. But um, it is a good movie, I will say. Total Recall is a great science fiction movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, one that I bought um, earlier this year and actually have a review for on the channel, so check that out if you want to see my full thoughts on Total Recall. This is one that I am going to review eventually that is coming to America. I'll probably wait until about a week before Coming to America 2 comes out on Amazon Prime to review this, but definitely look for this review to come to the channel soon. Collateral is a movie that I put a poll up on my YouTube community page 
um, earlier this week to ask you guys, do you want me to do a review for this or another title that I'm about ready to show you? Uh, they Live, and you guys picked They Live, so that's what I'll be reviewing this week. Collateral will probably be next week. So um, both really cool releases. And like I said, I've already showed off They Live in my Scream Factory, so don't have to go into it too much. 2012, that is another one that I have a review for on my channel, so go check that one out. This is a disaster flick that I don't really enjoy. <laughs> I don't like it that much, uh, but it did look really good in 4K. I will say that. Batman Returns, this looks spectacular in 4K. This is the only one of the Batman films that I own in 4K. Um, I would buy the first Batman. I do still need to buy that one. I don't know if I'm ever going to own Batman Forever and Batman and Robin in 4K, especially not Batman and, For uh, and Robin, um, but maybe someday. Who knows? Um, next up is Cinema Paradiso. Just did a review for that as well, and this is an Arrow release, one of the few 4K Arrow releases. And uh, yeah, this movie's a classic. Uh, check out my thoughts in my review that I just did. So right now, guys, we are getting into the collector's editions that I own of these 4K sets. Some of these, a lot of these are like Target exclusives uh, that I haven't even opened yet. For some reason, I used to buy the Steelbooks and uh, the Target exclusive for like all the MCU films, DC, uh, Pixar films and stuff. I, I used to do a lot of double dipping a couple years ago. I've toned down on that a little bit because I've realized that I was wasting a lot of money doing that. And it's money that I could put towards like more boutique labels and um, obscure classics from back in the day, uh, like Criterion or something like that, rather than like spend $70 on one movie that's just going to end up on Disney Plus anyway. So um, right here, guys, we have Apocalypse Now. This is a great freaking set right here. I wish they would do more sets like this, but Lionsgate did this, and it's, this is a six-disc set. I haven't seen anything... Oh, something fell out. I haven't seen anything else like this since this uh, release, but yeah, this is a fantastic set. Uh, six six freaking discs. It has Apocalypse Now Redux, the final cut. So many different cuts of uh, Apocalypse Now. And yeah, I think this is just a freaking gorgeous cover. That iconic shot of Martin Sheen and an uh, incredible movie too. Incredible movie by Francis Ford Coppola. Next up, guys, we have the Back to the Future trilogy. Admittedly, I haven't watched them yet on 4K. Of course, I've seen them. Um, the Back to the Future is in my top five as well. A lot of 4Ks on my top five. The only one that I don't own is one that I've been meaning to pick up, and that's Empire Strikes Back. Um, but yeah, Back to the Future, amazing movies. I love all three of these movies, and I need to watch them in 4K. Next up, we have the Alfred Hitchcock Collection. So I have watched Vertigo and Psycho, but I have not watched Rear Window and The Bird yet in 4K. But Vertigo looks freaking stunning. And uh, Psycho looks pretty damn good as well. So, um, and yeah, this is one of my favorite releases last year. Love this set. Next up, we have Aladdin, uh, the live action Guy Ritchie film right here in 4K. This is one that I, I really liked. If you're, if you're asking me which one was better in 2019 as far as like live action Disney films, this one's far better than Dumbo and The Lion King. Like, and I think a lot of people thought this was going to be uh, really shitty because Will Smith's genie sparked a lot of controversy in the early trailers. But I think a lot of people ate their words when they saw this movie and saw how good Will Smith was in this role. So yeah, I enjoy this one quite a bit. Haven't opened it yet. I actually bought it for like 15 bucks on sale um, a few months back. Uh, Avengers Endgame, one of the best MCU films. One of the best finales of any franchise, in my opinion. Such a great uh, uh, final chapter uh, to close out the Infinity Saga and the MCU. So yeah, um, Avengers Endgame. I don't love this cover, but yeah, I do love this movie. Um, this movie I do love it is... I go back and forth between this and The Winter Soldier as my favorite MCU film. Right now, it's probably The Winter Soldier. Um, I actually did our community ranking on my channel a few weeks ago where I talked up The Winter Soldier quite a bit and pushed it towards the top. But this this movie actually won, and I was happy for it to win. This is a great Target exclusive cover. I do love the cover on this one. And yeah, this is this freaking spectacular movie. One of the best endings, um, cliffhanger endings of like any franchise, trilogy, whatever. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp is a film that under normal, under normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't have bought, but since I was in this double dipping phase back in 2018, I bought this one, um, and the steel book because uh, for some reason I think it might be worth money someday. I don't know. Uh, Black Panther was another one that I bought the target exclusive of. Um, of course this one just recently celebrated. It's, uh, I think three 
yeah, three-year anniversary a couple of days ago. So obviously this is a great MCU film. I think it's in the top 10 MCU films, uh, RIP Chadwick Boseman. Interested, uh, but also a little uh, sad about the future of the Black Pan uh, Panther franchise. This is one of the top five uh, MCU films, in my opinion. Thor Ragnarok, incredible. Love this cover right here. Um, what Taika Waititi did to revitalize that that series was amazing. This one right here, guys, a, a DC film. I showed a lot of Marvel. Let's get into some more DC. We got Aquaman, uh, fantastic lenticular slipcover right here, 4K. This movie looks absolutely, this is like Blade Runner 2049 levels of 4K quality. This one looks phenomenal um, in 4K. The movie itself, I like quite a bit. I do enjoy Aquaman quite a bit. Incredibles 2 looks great in 4K, but I haven't opened up this one, but I did watch it with my uh, Steelbook version. Really fun movie. It's not as good as the first Incredibles, but I do enjoy uh, Incredibles 2 quite a bit. Next up we have, this is the first movie, I had to buy it because of this reason. This is the first movie I ever saw in theaters. One of my favorite animated films as well, but The Little Mermaid um, held up very well. Enjoyed watching this one with my kids in 4K. Looks great. And yeah, the first movie I ever saw in theaters. Had to have that one. Um, and th the last one, and I don't know why I saved this one for last because this movie is like one of the most um, unimpressive, unexciting films <laughs> in particular in the Star Wars uh, franchise, and that is Solo. I do love this Target um, exclusive collector's edition, though. This is a great cover on it. And uh, this is a great kind of shot of him on the back. So yeah, it actually makes you, it makes it look like this movie's actually exciting and good, um, which it's fine. It's fine. It's just not a great Star Wars movie. So uh, with that, guys, we are finished with my 4K collection. I hope that you all enjoyed this collection video. I will be doing more collection videos in the future. I'll probably be doing my Criterion collection, my Steelbook collection, my Arrow video collection, probably lumped in with some other miscellaneous items as well. Uh, continuing all of this, uh, culminating in a big Blu-ray collection video where I'll just show off all the rest of my Blu-ray. So definitely appreciate you guys watching this video, this very long video. It's probably going to be about 40 to 45 minutes. Um, hope you stick around till the end or at least watch it in pieces. I would appreciate it. Also, be sure to hit that like button, guys. Every single like helps this video out, helps this channel grow, and I would definitely appreciate it. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Turn on all bell notifications for future videos. Comment down below what are some of your favorite 4Ks that have been released, and we'll see you next time.